E aí, galera, tudo bem? Estamos aqui no DCS World F16 Viper. Essa sequência de vídeos que eu estou postando são dos arquivos lá do canal do Matt Agner, aquele CEO que posta os vídeos acadêmicos do F16 Viper. Até o outono de, desse ano de 2019, ele vai lançar vídeos explicando algumas coisas sobre o F16. Como os vídeos deles são públicos, eu vou reeditar eles e colocar aqui no nosso canal com legendas do YouTube. É, vou colocar a legenda do YouTube lá, vou copiar o vídeo e vou postar aqui no canal. Como os vídeos dele, eu já falei, são públicos, não vai ter problema. E como o meu canal não tem monitoração, ou seja, eu não ganho dinheiro para postar vídeo no YouTube, eu acredito que não vai ter problema. <cười> Mesmo assim, lá no na descrição do vídeo eu vou colocar todos os links dos arquivos original do Matt Egner. F16 Viper, acompanha aí. Hey everyone, Wags here from Eagle Dynamics, and in this video we're going to take a look at taxiing and taking off in the Viper. Now you may be thinking, well, Wags, you forgot about the cold start video. Now, don't worry, Doug Masters, it's definitely coming. It's just that it touches on many different components of the Viper, and it'll probably be the last video we do before the early access release. In the meantime, we hope you enjoy this video of an important aspect of flying the Viper. Let's get started. All right, so we're here on the ramp at Nels Air Force Base. But before we taxi out to the runway, let's take care of a few things. Uh, first, we'll turn on nose wheel steering, or NWS. And that's indicated by the green light here. And when we have this enabled, it allows us to use the rudder pedals to steer the nose wheel. And I'll be using this to uh, taxi on the ramp, uh, the taxiways, and then the initial part of the takeoff until about 70 knots. And we'll do a taxi check before we head out. Uh, all flaps are normal. Manual uh, trim needles are centered. Engine is set to pry. Air brakes are closed. Fuel panel is normal. The F-TID is below 650C and the oxygen is set to on. Let's get going. So the G engine is a pretty powerful one, so we just need to bring it over the idle a little bit. And we'll do a tow brake test, release, nose wheel steering test. And we'll take the uh, taxi turns at about 10 knots, and we can do the straightaways at about uh, 25. And if you can, when you're taking the turns, it's best to try to do so at idle throttle, so you're not no knocking anything over on the ramp. And to keep on the taxiway lines, the uh, nose wheel strut is just behind the seat. So as long as you essentially keep your butt over the lines, uh, you can pretty uh, easily keep on them. And it's less than we're in a uh, uh, Cat 1 stores configuration. Just a couple of sets of air to air missiles. And between that and a pretty long runway, we'll go ahead and do a military thrust takeoff. But if we were, say, at uh, Cat 3, heavier load, or a shorter runway, then we do an afterburner takeoff. I'll stop here at the hold. Okay, we can now uh, go ahead and arm up the seat. Check that probe heat is on. Traffic check. Actually, before we take the runway, let's take a look at the navigation HUD. So, on the left side, we have our airspeed. Uh, currently, it's in calibrated airspeed, indicated by the C. And on the right, we have our altitude is barometric. Uh, below that, we have our radar altitude indicated by the R. And below that, we have our uh, low altitude warning. Right now, it's set to 500 feet. And that's why it's flashing, because we're below it. So let's actually reset that. We'll go to allow on the ICP. And we'll punch in zero, enter. And now we have it set to zero. And we'll go ahead and go uh, dauber left to return back. Now below that we have our slant range to a selected uh, steer point, uh, time to selected steer point, 
the range of the steer point and the steer point number. Uh, along the center, we have our roll angle, our pitch ladder, our angle of attack bracket, our heading tape, our horizon line, and on top of each other here is the gun cross and the flight path marker, and to the left of that is the tadpole, which points in the direction of the steer point. Uh, below that is our current G, then down here is our mock, our peak G since the last reset, our master mode currently in nav, and then our bullseye information. Now before we take off, let's go ahead and get rid of the roll angle indicator and put the DED on the HUD. That's better. Okay, let's go ahead and take the runway. And you notice that uh, diamond on the HUD, that indicates the location of our steer point. Tow brakes. At this point we can turn on the FCR, or the fire control radar. Check that the brakes are closed. Probe heat is on. At this point now we'll go ahead and tow brakes down. And we'll uh, bring the RPM up to uh, 90%. Now, an important part of the takeoff, of course, is going to be the takeoff airspeed. And let's take a look at a chart about that real quick. So in this little chart, along the bottom, we have our gross weight. So in this mission, I have a gross weight of about 28.4 thousand pounds. And then on the left side, we have the suggested takeoff speed. So it's just a matter of f finding your weight, following it up until it intersects the curve, and then following that to the left to find your recommended takeoff speed. So in this case, it's going to be 155 knots. Okay, so we can see that we're going to have a takeoff speed of 155 knots. So we're going to check now to see that our uh, FTIT is below 980C. Uh, that looks good. Nozzles look good. So we can release the brake and accelerate to military power. And we're looking for 70 knots and nose wheel steering off. Now we're looking for 155. And take off. Once a positive rate of climb is established, we'll go gear up. And then we'll have a pitch angle between 8 and 12 degrees to climb out. And we'll be looking for a departure airspeed of 350 knots. Uh, looks like our no fuel imbalance. That looks good. F-tit looks good. And that's a you know little look at how you taxi and take off in the Viper. I very much hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.